Today we say goodbye to Mitch Haniger, who signed a three-year deal with the San Francisco Giants. We'll also look at some names the Mariners could target in the Rule 5 draft and more on today's episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. This is Tidane Gonzalez and Colby Patton for the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube. Or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description below. On the show today, Mitch Haniger is a San Francisco Giant officially. We'll react to the deal he signed with San Francisco and say thank you to one of the Mariners' leaders of the past half decade, We'll also discuss the return of Casey Sadler, who signed a minor league contract with Seattle today, and go over a few names the team could target in the Rule 5 draft this afternoon. But before we get into all of that, a thank you to you guys for helping us get to 3,000 followers on Twitter, which means we are officially going to be giving away the signed Jerry Kelnick card, along with the signed Taylor Dollar card, signed Taylor Trammell card, and the signed Cal Raleigh rookie card on tomorrow's show. So if you're watching this on Wednesday, you still have a chance to enter the giveaway. Uh, We're going to be announcing those winners and picking those names uh, via our YouTube subscriber list. So all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. If you're watching us on YouTube or if you're listening on your preferred podcast platform, head on over to our YouTube, Locked On Mariners on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and you're entered to win one of those four cards two of those four cards, all four of the cards, who knows? We'll see what the uh, RNG gods decide for you and uh, your friends and all those people that you helped get uh, subscribed to our channel, follow our Twitter, all that stuff to get entered in this giveaway and help us reach our goals. So again, thank you so much to all of you that participated and thank you if you are going to subscribe to enter our giveaway here in the next few hours. Uh, Tomorrow morning, though, is the cutoff date for that. So, Mitch Hanniger is no longer a Seattle Mariner officially, Colby. Uh, he signs a three-year, $43.5 million deal with the San Francisco Giants. As of last night, it's been officially announced by the Giants. The Mariners have sent out a thank you to Mitch via social media, all that stuff. Uh, and this is uh, a little bit of an end of an era uh, with uh, Mitch Haniger officially leaving, but the writing was on the wall. We had heard over the last you know few weeks, last couple of weeks really, that his market was starting to get to a place that you know you and I didn't really feel comfortable going, and I think the Mariners definitely did not feel comfortable going just with the years that were being thrown around. Not necessarily the money. I think the money is more than fine here on Mitch. Uh, it's just really making that year commitment to someone that just hasn't been able to stay on the field and has seen a decline in his production as of late. Uh, so what's your reaction to the steal overall? Uh, thank goodness the Mariners didn't do it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, three years for a guy with the injury history of Mitch Haniger, who's, you know, past his age 30 season now. And it, it, it typically those things don't get better as you age. So I'm pretty happy the Mariners avoided that. Um, I'm also really happy for Mitch. Um, You know, it's a bit of a homecoming from for him. He's a Northern California guy. Uh, I imagine he was, you know, I imagine he he went to uh, quite a few uh, Giants games as a kid. Um, So he gets to go to a quality organization. Um, He gets paid, which is awesome. Good for him. Uh, It's close to his his home in, in Northern California, close to where he went to high school and college. Um, that that's awesome. Uh, and you know, it, again, it's a quality organization. I imagine he'll DH. I, I mean, just the thought of Mitch Haniger trying to cover that right center gap, uh, in that they have in San Francisco is who, I mean, that that's brutal, but, um, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just happy for Mitch. Uh, I think the Mariners did the right thing here and moving on. Uh, you need reliability uh, this year. Mitch Haniger is just not a guy who can do that. Not all of it is own fault. There's been some really fluky injuries, but they all count and they all stack up. And eventually you just get to a tipping point where if you're the Mariners, you need somebody you feel good about playing is going to play for you, uh, you know, 140 times a year, give or take. So uh, happy for Mitch. Uh, 
I, you know, I'm certainly going to miss him. Uh, he's, he was a, he was a great Mariner, uh, you know, gave it, gave the club everything he had. I, I wish he was a bigger part of the rebuild or the, uh, the drought, uh, end, ender as, as, you know, as I want him to be, he just, the injuries just really drained him of a lot of his value. He had to the team in 2022, but you know, the leadership skills were there. He was, uh, kind of the, the rallying cry more or less after the 2021 season didn't go the right way. He wrote the letter and all that stuff. And I think Mariner fans everywhere would, uh, would tip their cap to Mitch and, and, uh, he'll be warmly received, uh, whenever he comes back and, and plays in Seattle. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I think he, it's well-earned. Mitch Haniger was uh, a very good Mariner and uh, I, I hope he's, I hope uh, he's healthy and I hope he crushes it in San Francisco because uh, Mitch Haniger is a guy who's incredibly easy to root for. Yeah. Mariners fans won't get a chance to see him in person this year. I don't believe, I don't think they play the giants twice this year, but uh, the Mariners will face Mitch and the giants uh, July 3rd through the 5th. Unfortunate that Mitch will not be teammates with Aaron judge. It seemed like that might've been a possibility last night. Maybe the Carlos Correa report though is uh, true. We'll see if that comes to fruition, Uh, but the giants have a a lot of money to spend. So I think they're going to be pretty busy and uh, Mitch is going to be on a pretty good team uh, for the next couple of years here. Um, but yeah, you know, like you said, the the injuries, like some of the injuries that he's sustained are, are fluky, right? So you can't hold that against him. Really, from from my perspective, when we talk about Mitch's injuries, I'm more sort of talking about it, you know, from the, the aspect of it just piling up on his, you know, 30 plus year old body, right? Rather than saying, oh, this guy is just injury prone. I don't want anything to do with him. It's more just because like... Even though that some of those injuries are fluky, it's still tax on. Uh, that's still stuff that he just kind of has to live with from here on out as a as a player uh, and as an athlete. So, uh, but yeah, good for Mitch. Awesome for Mitch. Really stoked for him. Great that he gets to go back home, gets to play with a uh, pretty dang good organization uh, at a beautiful ballpark, uh, and uh, hope he has a lot of fun and crushes it and stays healthy. Most importantly, uh, before we uh, we move on, I want to get your favorite. Mitch Haniger moment because it's been uh, what man it's been a while <laughs> that he was he was here. Um, mm-hmm. God, when when did they trade for him? Was it 2016, 2017? Uh, winter of twenty seventeen. Right, right. So about a half decade here. A lot of memories that he created in a Mariners uniform. What's your favorite? Uh, just you know the the Mitch Haniger game, uh, game one sixty one mm. last year. Mitch drives in all five runs uh, in a game the Mariners had to have to stay alive. Um, gets the big RBI single, scores J.P. Crawford from second off of Steve Ciszek, uh Dave Sims, you know, uh, going crazy in the booth with the Hey Now call and and what a night, what a night, and and uh, you know, I, I think obviously you know the the pageantry of that and and the the broadcast mm. cam uh, on Sim. So you can see right. him make his call and, and, you know, Mitch firing up the dugout and all that stuff. That's just, that's just kind of who Mitch was. You know, there were times where he would carry this team on his back when he was healthy and he mm-hmm. would carry him for a month at a time. And, and he's that type of guy. He's that type of, uh, of leader in the clubhouse. He's not very vocal. He's not a guy who's going to, you know, rally the troops raw, raw style, but he puts in the work and he's an incredibly hard worker, which makes all the injuries he suffered and had to work through all the more, uh, tough to deal with like unfair almost so the the mitch haniger game uh you know i mean heck the game is named after him so that that's my yeah. favorite memory we have to go back to 2018 i believe for mine in the rain it was just a random midweek day uh game on facebook i think against the angels i'm pretty sure they that was 2021 no that wasn't 20 20- no no that was 2021 no are you no, sure no. robinson cano was on that team no, no no like that was like i think he was suspended at the time actually of that game um yeah it was 2018 in the rain on facebook against the angels the clip that i posted on twitter last night oh, that was not okay. that was not 2021 that was not 2021 i know for a fact okay you're right all right all right, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. thank you all right. thank you just give checking me, just checking give me some credit here I have a. Never. Th- I can remember some things sometimes. See, I can do stuff. Uh, so it was 2018 in the rain against the Angels. It was a, just an awesome moment that you know, and that was really at the peak of the Mariners' run that they had that year. When God, weren't they like 
15 games over 500 or something during the All-Star break. It was something ridiculous like that. They were really hot. Obviously did not end the drought that year. Uh, but that was kind of the, the height of their success that season. It was a great moment. And that was, that was when Mitch really, to me, kind of solidified himself as a dude on this team. Uh, and that was awesome. And, of course, it came against the Angels. So, like, duh. And your, so your did the Mitch also, Haniger game. So yeah. did the Mitch Haniger game as well. Yeah, Mitch crushes the Angels, owns the Angels, all that good stuff. We're going to miss Mitch. Uh, best to him in San Francisco. Uh, let's talk about a guy that um, <laughs> was gone and has returned. Uh, he was only gone for about a month, but he has since returned. Casey Sadler has returned on a minor league contract. We'll be talking about him in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Simply Safe. At Locked On Mariners, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Mariners listeners 40% off a new security system, but don't put this off. Here's why I love it. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get higher priority police response simply safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room window and door hd security cameras for inside and out smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real and even hazard sensors that detect fires floods and other threats to your home 24 7 professional monitoring service costs under one dollar a day that's less than half the price of a traditional home security system with top rated with the top rated simply safe app stay in complete control of your system arm or disarm unlock for a guest access your cameras or adjust system settings anytime anywhere don't miss your chance to say big on my favorite security system get 40 percent off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on mlb today that's simplysafe.com slash locked on mlb there's no safe like simply safe you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you so much for making us your first listen so per john Heyman, so grain of salt grain of salt but i think it has been confirmed by a couple of other sources Casey Sadler, well, after being... Sadler himself. Oh, Sadler himself. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I didn't see that. All right, so Casey Sadler himself. Forget John Heyman, then. Casey Sadler <laughs> himself has announced that uh, he has returned to the Seattle Mariners on a minor league contract after being non-tendered about a month ago. Uh, so his... Uh, <laughs> he also had a pretty funny tweet. I did see the the tweet that he had today. Um about uh, Friends. Is, was this a Friends episode? Were we on a break or not? Very mm-hmm. good tweet. Elite tweet. Good job, Casey. Appreciate you. Uh, so, yeah, Sadler's back. Uh, that was one when he got non-tender that we were like, huh, that's weird. Because we thought that even coming off of the shoulder thing that he had last year, missed all of the 2022 season, um, that he would probably be a, a pretty you know, substantial piece of this bullpen moving forward. And maybe that still will be the case, even though that he's on a minor league deal. Uh, but it's good to get Sadler back after a great 2021 season for him. Right, Colby? Yeah, um, not all that surprising. You miss an entire year with a shoulder injury. Uh, your options become limited pretty quick. Um, I, I think Casey probably knew that the odds of him getting a major league deal at any point were basically zero. Um, so... When I come back to Seattle, it's an organization where he's kind of actually laid in some roots. Uh, he lives in the area. Uh, you know, he's he's done a lot of work in the city of Seattle, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think he's going to have a pretty good shot to make the club, assuming that he can stay healthy um, or that he can get back to healthy. Uh, and, you know, if, if he can repeat what he did in 2021, that's, that's your Eric Swanson replacement right there. So uh, big if, but we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, Sadler is, is certainly a fan favorite. So it's nice to see him back in the fold. Um, And I I do think he stands a pretty good shot of making the bullpen, but we'll see, man. I mean, Isaiah Campbell's not going to go away. Perlander Burrow is not going to go away. And those two guys carry significantly higher upside than than Sadler. But you do need steady veteran presence in the middle of your bullpen. And, and, you know, Sadler is a guy who who could, you know, push out Trevor Gott maybe. Um, Mm-hmm. Or it could, you know, push out Penn Murphy or, or Matt Festa. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's it's a good signing. Uh, there's no downside to a minor league deal, and and obviously, um, Sadler likes it in Seattle, and, and the Mariners like Casey Sadler. So it's it's not all that surprising. 
So Ryan Divish of the Seattle Times, uh, I think it was earlier today, maybe last night, tweeted that he expects the Mariners to add a few more minor league uh, signings over the course of this week, including a catcher uh, for Triple A Tacoma. Uh, so I know that you uh, added a few minor league uh, deals in our offseason plan uh, when you posted that on our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash control the zone for anyone that wants to check that out. Uh, so... I assume you have some names uh, that are still out there that uh, you would like to see the Mariners maybe add, right? No, you don't have any names. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, like, here's the deal. When the Mariners do minor league free agency or they give out minor league deals, they typically mm. give them to, to career minor leaguers. <laughs> like, like, very right. rarely are there major league quality players who they give minor league deals to. Um, there's a couple, you know. Um, I wonder if Jonathan VR is open to come back. Your eyes got so wide, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, but seriously, I do wonder if, like, Jonathan VR would want to come back on a minor uh, league deal. Uh, hey, I, I don't know. Yeah, Obligatory Chuck, Jonathan always. VR. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Edwin Rios is kind of interesting on a minor league deal. Mm, Former Dodgers, mm. left-hand. Uh, a lot of power, a lot of swing and miss. So, eh, mm. maybe there. Donovan Walton, he's a free agent. Hey, Donnie. I mean, yeah, good old Donnie baseball. Um, yeah, so I mean, there there are guys. There's just not a lot of them. Uh, it's interesting that Divish specifically mentioned catcher. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a minor league catcher. That's going to be Brian O'Keefe or somebody like that. I it's it's not Terenz, not yet. Uh, I still think Luis has a decent shot of getting a a major league deal somewhere. So it's not going to be him. Uh, I really don't think it's going to be like. Brian Anderson. I think Brian Anderson is going to get a major league deal. Um, Johan Camargo is kind of an interesting name. Former Braves mm. third baseman can play a couple different positions. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, I think pretty much every, Willie Calhoun would be an interesting on a minor league deal. Sure. Uh, but I, I do think that a lot of the, what we're going to see uh, in terms of the Mariners bringing in, I don't think the Mariners are going to bring in somebody on a minor league deal that we're all like, Ooh, Ooh, I remember him. I really doubt it. It's it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, career minor leaguers and maybe guys with a couple of, like, sniffs at the big league level. Albert Almora, maybe somebody like that. Uh, but more than likely, it'll be it'll be some pitchers. Yeah, some pitchers. And apparently one catcher. And apparently a catcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the Mariners might be adding a pitcher to their 26-man roster later today in the Rule 5 draft. Uh, we're going to go over some names. By the time that you're watching this, the Rule 5 draft might be over. Uh, but Colby's got some names, and hopefully he uh, he gets one of them right. <laughs> and so we'll have some information for you on whoever the Mariners wind up picking this afternoon. We'll see. Uh, but first, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, Rule 5 draft is this afternoon. Like I said, it might be happening while you're watching this, or it's already over by the time you're watching this, but we're recording this beforehand, so we're going to go over some names. Colby's got a list of names that he wants to go through here. Uh, has probably a little bit of information on these guys, but ultimately they're they're minor leaguers, so we, we don't have a ton on them. Uh, but hopefully, <laughs> Colby gets one of these guys right, so... Colby, the floor is yours. Not liking my chances here. Um, mm. So real fast here, just quick breakdown, the Rule 5 draft, what it is. Um, essentially, the Rule 5 draft is an attempt by Major League Baseball to prevent teams from hoarding prospects because they have a loaded 40-man roster. Uh, it's to try and get these guys who aren't good enough to make a good 40-man but might be good enough to play in the big leagues. It's, it's a way for them to prevent uh, roster stacking essentially, but uh, it doesn't really work that way. It, it's it's they should just give the minor leaguers free agency a year earlier than they currently do. Uh, that'd be a simpler solution. But essentially, you take a player in the Rule Five Draft, you give the team that you stole a player from a hundred thousand dollars. That player has to spend the entire regular season on your twenty-six man roster. Uh, if you want to, you know, DFA the player, or if you want to take him off of your twenty-six man roster. You can offer him back to you have to offer him back to the original team. 
uh, for fifty thousand uh, dollars. They would have to pay you fifty thousand um, dollars. If they say no, then he goes on waivers and he clears that way. If a team claims him on waivers, he is still Rule Five, which means you still have to hold him on your roster for the entire year, or you could work out a trade, which happens quite often. Is is the the side who you took the player from is just like, oh, just give us. $35,000 cash and, and you can have them, right? That's what ha usually happens in this thing. So uh, typically guys who are on the rule five list, they're unprotected. They're unprotected for a reason. So don't think you're going to get any future stars out of the rule five draft. You're, you're looking for bullpen pieces and, and bench guys mostly. Mm -hmm. So, and the Mariners have historically added relievers. Uh, and I believe Jerry DePoto even said that he expects that they're going to add a pitcher uh at the rule five draft yes. today so i assume right. most of the guys if not all the guys on your list are going to be reliever types correct uh all but one okay now there is before we get into your list though there is one guy uh who a listener of ours blanking on the name so sorry to you uh on twitter <laughs> asked you about austin shitton former <laughs> mariners prospect he is eligible to be selected in the rule five draft i know you love austin shenton would you consider <laughs> drafting him even though the, you would have to guarantee him a spot on the roster no i just there's no chance he makes your major league team uh so yeah. if i want him i can just go trade for him after the rule five draft or, or if a team takes him i can just trade for him and by the way we might see that teams often take a player in the rule five and then trade him to another team uh, but no, I don't see it. Um, he was, he was just really bad in 2022. I still believe in the bat, but he's not close to the major leagues right now. So no, I wouldn't. All right. Um, so, uh, your reliever list plus one other guy. All right. We'll start with the bat since he's the easiest to, to hand out here. Uh, Dominique Canzone is a left-handed hitting outfielder, uh, in the Arizona diamondback system. Uh, good athlete. He's a minor league contributor. He's topped out at triple a, uh, he's ready for a major league challenge. He's got some power. He's over a 500 career slug. He had 22 home runs last year. Um, apparently he has a little bit of first base experience as well. can handle the corner outfielders pretty well. Uh, so he's an interesting guy. I think some team will give him a shot. I think a team like Oakland or Pittsburgh, uh, would be wise to maybe, uh, give him a shot, but I don't really see a fit for Seattle. He's again, he's a lefty, not a righty. Um, and I think the Mariners are looking for a little more uh, reliability from their roster spots. But he is a, mm. he is a guy uh, to watch out for. He doesn't strike out a ton either. So that's he interesting. He's he's a, he's, he's a he's, pitcher. He certainly is a guy. He certainly is a baseball player. All yes. right. Who's next? Uh, there's two two Lopez's out of Tampa that I'm I'm pretty interested in. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there is uh, Jose Lopez. And then mm -hmm. there is Jacob Lopez. Both are left-handed relievers. Wait, Jose Lopez, Lopez is... one half of the double play twins? It's <laughs> Uni no. and Jose. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, both are left-handed relievers. Both have swing and miss stuff. I'm especially intrigued by Jacob Lopez. It's a guy I liked from last year. Mm -hmm. um, he is coming off a of Tommy John surgery, so that might actually help because you can stash a guy on your 60-day IL and send him on minor league rehab and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But he throws from a funky angle. He got a ton of strikeouts in, in 2021. Uh, throw strikes. He, he's an interesting arm as well. Um, interestingly, not the only lefty I have here. Uh, Eric Miller is a, is a left-handed pitcher out of the Philadelphia organization. Uh, mm -hmm. He's been on prospect lists for a while now. Uh, he was a starter, but it didn't really work out. They moved him to the bullpen. Now he's a lefty pumping mid to upper 90s fastballs with a decent slider. Huge control and command issues there, so that's obviously why he's unprotected. Um, uh, another left-handed reliever. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say his name right, but Andrew Misiasek uh, is left-handed pitcher mm -hmm. out of uh, Cleveland. He's gotten a ton of strikeouts, good FIP, good numbers in, in the minors. Uh, not overpowering stuff. He, he has kind of a funky delivery. It's it's the setup reminds me of Sean Doolittle, but then the, like the, the actual motion kind of reminds me a little bit of Anthony Mashevitz. I think mm -hmm. that maybe is a guy who's a pretty good comp here. Um, 
and then uh, that, that that's it for the lefties. A uh, couple right-handed relievers. Yeah, when uh, are you going to get to the best name in this Rule 5 draft? Quality? I didn't put him on the list. So You didn't put him on the list? How dare you? I thought that was more of a CTZ uh, type <laughs> of discussion. All right, check out today's episode of Control the Zone if you want to know there who we're go. talking about. <laughs> Um, couple right-handed reliever, uh, relievers, <laughs> relievers, relievers. Victor Bodnick <laughs> is a right-handed. That's pitcher a super villain. That's not a baseball player. That's a no. super villain. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bodnick is is a smaller guy for you know a pitcher standpoint. He's six foot, about two hundred pounds. Uh, big fastball again. Doesn't throw a lot of strikes. That's a common theme for most pitchers who are unprotected. If they could throw strikes with this stuff. They'd be on the 40 man. So keep that in mind. Uh, Zach Green is pretty interesting. It's kind of a high spin rate type of guy um, out of the Yankees organization. Fastball plays up very well in the zone. Good slider. Um, he's an interesting name that I would watch. Um, and then kind of, I think this guy would probably go in the bullpen, but he's got a shot to start. Um, Jaden Murray of the Astros organization. Uh, he came over in the, uh, in the Trey Mancini trade. Uh, he's 93, 95 with a good, pre- with a sinker, uh, pretty good sinker, uh, good change, a uh, good slider, uh, throws a lot of strikes. This is what differentiates him between most of the other unprotected guys. Uh, 2.2 base on ball per nine in his career in the mm-hmm. minor leagues. And he's not going to strike out a guy printing. He's going to be in, in the high eights uh, in that range. So in the majors, he's probably a low eight or, or high seven type of guy, but he's going to throw strikes. He's got four quality pitches, uh, all of them play up because he's got above average command. Uh, he's a really interesting arm. I wonder if you put him in the bullpen, if the velocity and stuff ticks up a little bit more. There's a shot that he's the number four starter here, and and if the Mariners were to select him, uh, I'd probably put him near the range of Taylor Dollard in terms of like prospect ranks. So uh, I suspect he'll be long gone before the Mariners pick. Uh, but that that's kind of a, a fun guy who gives the Mariners some rotation depth, but more than likely gives him a, a guy out of the bullpen whose stuff could play up. So. Uh, I'm 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 a pretty big fan of uh, of Jaden. So, all right. Then you have a plus one. Who's your plus? What's up? Oh, was the Murray Murray was your plus one? In terms of like you said, there was like relievers and then like uh, another type of guy. Yeah, no, yeah, he's he's the guy who has a shot to start. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. That, okay. That's what kind of differentiates him between the other uh, him, him and the other names. Yeah, I get what so, you're saying. Now. Mm-hmm. all right cool um yeah so we'll see we'll see what it is it's probably g- not going to be any of these None guys of them. because of course because of course uh but the expectation is that they are going to add uh a reliever or someone at the uh at the rule five draft maybe there's a catcher out there that we don't know about i don't know there's also a minor league portion of the rule five yes. draft. so yeah we'll see Seattle if there's anyone that they want to add dips there into that as well so yeah yeah, um, I think they added one, what three guys last year. Yeah, uh, one name I would watch going the other way for the Mariners. Um, but well, in the major league section, I would watch for Travis Kuhn. He's a guy who could get mm. taken. A um, yep. little bit surprised the Mariners didn't protect him. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think Bobby Bombs, Robert Perez Jr. is going anywhere. He's just a little too far away uh, to be taken uh maybe in the minor league portion i'm not quite sure who's eligible for the minor league portion i don't know if if bobby bombs is or isn't uh one guy who is eligible for the minor league portion though and i think i could see a team taking a shot on is is sam carlson so um we'll have to wait and see what happens with uh with sam carlson yeah he's an interesting guy man i I still believe in sam carlson a little bit yeah just you know needs to i mean he's finally healthy and he's bulked up but just got to start rising through the ranks. Got to start performing a little bit here. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for our show. Uh, so the plan right now is to do a mailbag on Friday instead of Fan Fix for Friday. Uh, and then we'll do we'll get back to our regular schedule next week. Also, another thing that we need to talk about here real quick before we hop off uh, is some schedule changes. Uh, because we, we did talk about that in a recording, but then that recording got lost uh the other day and uh then when we re-recorded i forgot to mention it so uh, again so there we go it's on me uh but Always we is. are going to be going to three shows a week here on the locked on mariners podcast and this is just a thing for all the baseball podcasts on the locked on network uh the week of december 18th uh, so we'll be going monday wednesday friday 
on here and then tuesday and thursday on our patreon shows uh, and we'll be doing that until pitchers and catchers report that's what we've been told so this is going to be a very temporary change for about a couple months and then we'll be back to five shows a week in the in the middle of february ish so yeah um then tomorrow i think we're gonna talk a little bit about this pitching market because it is getting out of hand we'll talk about how that you know impacts the mariners with chris flexen and marco gonzalez you know should they take advantage of maybe you know uh, an improved trade market for them or would it make more sense just to hold on to flexen because is flexen now suddenly a bargain to have uh so we'll get into that discussion. We'll talk about some other things. Uh, so check us out on uh, tomorrow's episode of Locked On Mariners. But that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, the C-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast featuring the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast just like us and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you tomorrow peace